Hello and welcome to the Bad Tech. My name is Hima. And I'm Tamara. This is a continuation of our last episode at the movies. We ended up talking about the Joker? new Joker movie and uh, it kind of we felt it was too long so we just kind of thought we'd divide this into two segments. Yeah. And so this is part two. Let's uh, jump right in. All right. Hollywood. Yeah. By uh, Quentin Tarantino. His 10th film. 9th. The 10th yes, is yes. going to be his last. Yes. Yeah. His 9th film which and uh, which he has said is his love letter to Hollywood to 1960s Hollywood. Yeah. Uh what did you think of 69, it? 69 Summer of Love. No. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I know lots of people were surprisingly bored by it. Mm. Some people I heard actually the theater I was in I saw some people walked out and that was before the violence yeah lots of people at least on sri lankan twitter i see a lot of people calling it boring so th- this was a fairly long movie it was close to 3 hours uh, i didn't mind the length at all i didn't either like uh, but if you're thinking of you know what was really long and took ages to finish no at the same length in game <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> let's talk talk about yeah. uh, we we will have to come to that yeah, we'll at, c- some c- at some point during this conversation yeah, because yeah. we have a segment for that but um yeah but i i was not bored either i loved the movie i saw yeah. it twice uh i actually loved every bit of it the one scene that made me weirdly uncomfortable was the bruce lee fight let's come to that but uh if we talk about the movie we have to, like i have to admit that so this movie is set in na- the late 60s 1960s hollywood and i did not get a lot of the references so th- this what i did was the after i saw the movie the first time i went back read a lot of the literature around it like on around sharon the, in, on sharon i knew about that the murder charles manson that part but um there were some other pretty nice details like mm. e- like even steve mcqueen was mm. not a person as an actor that i was very familiar yeah. with i heard the name i had seen the guy i had oh, I mean, heard about I mean, the movie actually i mean i, I half the references kind of yes. like flew way over my head like they are they are very dated references so yeah. i can kind of see why people may have been right uninterested yeah. uh in the movie but it still was really well made yeah that's why it was such a good film i thought yeah. because even though we didn't get half the references it was still yes. immensely enjoyable yeah that's what tarantino is i guess i know he has his detractors and but compared to his previous movies this did feel Tarantino is known for his liberal portrayal of violence. violence, right? This felt very tame in that regard. The thing about Tarantino I feel is that he's like a fuck you guy. Mm. Like the harder you criticize him, the the more out of his way he goes to like right. piss you off. Right. You see that in interviews, for example. Yes. Like if whenever somebody calls him out on his quote unquote glorification of violence, he He snaps. Uh, yeah. Sometimes he just like makes a joke out of it all. It's like mm. there was this one interview I remember with some uh, some lady I forget. Like it's like because it's fun. Like you know that's that's that's, that's I think that's who he is as a filmmaker. He kind of gets a kick out of that. But yeah, I I don't know that this is his best work. I think to date his best film is still Jackie Brown for me, which I haven't seen. Followed by pulp fiction i suppose yeah. you have to see django and chain django was good they was not his best but it was good um so since django and uh, sorry since, since inglorious bastards he's been kind of like a revisionist history guy right that's his that's what he's been doing even with this movie mm. with the whole role reversal and yes yeah. and then killing hitler in a theater yeah he's kind of been experimenting with that and he's it's i think it works it is quite fun to watch yeah It's immensely satisfying even for us who didn't even grow up knowing anything about Charles Manson or, yes. or Sharon Tate or anything and This is like his homage to the ideal Hollywood that mm. would have been mm. had the Manson murders not happened right. right So a lot of people like including the people that I saw the movie with our mutual friends 
they were confused that they were confused about uh, Margot Robbie's role in this fil- film yeah. like Sharon Tate's mm. like where that character goes because uh, this film essentially has two storylines right mm. one is uh, the main storyline is uh, is about Rick Dalton who mm. is a fictional character he's a struggling actor he mm. was a big actor on TV he had his own show but then when that ended become a bit of a has been yes and he's struggling to get into movies he's mm-hmm. not really getting any roles so he's he's spending his days playing uh like pretty disposable villain characters in in tv shows right and then suddenly he gets this chance to go to italy and make some spaghetti westerns mm. he is the main character in the movie and, and he 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 goes through all this with his stunt yeah. double Cliff Booth mm. who is played by uh, Brad Pitt and uh, one thing that I did not know going into this movie was that it was quite common in that era to you know for actors to like hang out with their stunt doubles mm. they did like a series of movies together they hung out together uh, like that that was mm. a thing which I don't think is there anymore now so that was Rick Dalton's part of of the story and the other set of characters revolves around uh, Sharon Tate who is mm. played by Margot Robbie uh, Sharon Tate is married to Roman Polanski the mm. filmmaker who is uh, now a convicted pedophile <laughs> yeah yeah that w- that also sparked some controversy i think because you know it's got me thinking like if so since since this murder didn't happen then history would have been written very differently since then no like in the history of hollywood polanski may not have ended up doing the things he did i guess i we don't know i'm just saying yeah. it's a possibility i mean it's kind of like tarantino's fantasy right he it is his fan- fantasy of yeah. an idyllic hollywood yeah. right so so what happened in the real world was that in 1972 charles manson this cult leader and failed musician who mm. like who had his own cult of hippies murdered nine people mm. including sharon tate and it's uh, two friends who were uh, staying at the house with her i forget their names and some other people and he was convicted and he he went to prison for life and he died in two, a couple of years ago mm. so in in tarantino's version of the story this murder does not happen mm. the the murderous hippies come to the house mm. but uh, so so sharon tate lives one house next to rick dalton leonardo dicaprio's character the hippies come to rick dalton's house they get brutally murdered oh that was fun by yeah. uh cliff booth's dog and uh, and rick dalton in the end uh, which the, the the i think one of the funniest scenes was when he goes back to the shed takes his uh, flamethrower flame <laughs> and torches it burns a yeah, crisp uh, yeah girl in the pool it was really fun why so was it so fun <laughs> like do you do you enjoy <laughs> violence against women tamara is that what you're saying part of the deal is l- like that whole scene was set up to be so funny mm. like the the choice of music like the, the the song that's playing while all this is going on is uh vanilla fudge's uh you leave me hanging on like it's it's real like you have to see it you have you haven't seen it you have to see it to to experience that but why now you've spoiled it <laughs> <laughs> yes. why would anyone bother <laughs> seeing it now no but like i can't do justice to that scene you have to see it but then you you also have to see the build up to that scene yeah where i love the detours i love the yeah. i love the two of them driving around and man brad pitt that guy is still got it i thought you didn't like him oh no i do i mean okay he's not the world's greatest actor but yeah. he's he perfectly yeah. serviceable and um, still very much i can be like yes did you see that scene where he takes <laughs> his shirt off on the roof my god damn that was like uh-huh. i mean tarantino gets shot on a lot not entirely unfairly for mm. you know his this whole obsession with feet mm. which was really yeah. apparent but in but this, this movie that, as well that whole scene with brad pitt taking a shirt off that that was like a completely gratuitous scene but it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was nice like like the man in his 50s and still yeah. still got it that was yeah. it was good to see very aspirational shall we say yeah <laughs> uh yeah you want to talk about the feet it's fucking weird right like it is i weird, think like at this this is why this is why i'm convinced that like right now tarantino just he's basically trolling people at this point i think i think he's like he knows that people have made an issue out of it to be fair it is kind of fucking weird but <laughs> it's like okay so you want feet like okay you don't like my feet like here this time i i'm, I'm giving you dirty feet yeah. <laughs> like you know and that's like like the camera lingers on it for like a good yes. 30 seconds and it's like so yeah and 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 at that scene where yeah. sharon dead goes to the theater and she yeah. puts her feet up on like yeah. people don't do that yeah like yeah, nobody does that yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
it's 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 there for a reason and yeah. and like tarantino is trying to wants to gross you out like look yes. how dirty these feet are like yeah. Yeah. and then that hippie girl in the car yes in the car like, man that was <laughs> that was that was hard to watch <laughs> but uh, yeah so at this point i think he just does not care anymore mm. i'm quentin tarantino i'll do whatever the fuck i want that's what he wants his fans to think that's what he wants the studios to think that's what he wants the media to think at, at this point and uh, well it's a shame that he's almost done with his movies this is ninth one he's uh, he has said that he'll only make 10 movies Ten, right yes and i think Which after that he's supposed to move on to some netflix thing or some shit right are the rumors true about him star making star trek i don't know do you really see tarantino making a star trek movie i don't know if i'd want to watch it i'm not a trek imagine tarantino sense. making a marvel movie <laughs> like <laughs> fuck no yes but okay like you can't really say that because like you have to give him some like really like wacky weird character that kind of like it, it has to be completely outside the marvel mold you know it's yes like it cannot be formulaic i get what you're saying so yeah but then like i i, th- I also think it's it's a good thing that is making only 10 his process is very long i think he takes a long time to he write yes um. and that also means that he's really giving things the attention that they deserve like to 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 like make a mm. good work of art right which is a good thing right uh, i think he's one of the few remaining filmmakers who are kind of like dare to do their own thing he is at least at least in like you know the mainstream and uh, that's a good thing that's because i mean if you look at this list of blockbusters the past few years it's kind of depressing really i mean if you're a fan of movies and everything is either a, a sequel a reboot a reimagining a soft reboot a prequel a wrap around yeah <laughs> 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 a fucking wrap around <laughs> originality is kind of dead almost in yeah. hollywood and uh, we have a guy in Tarantino who's still you know fuck you I'm Quentin fucking Tarantino I'll do what I want yeah. and I think that's great I know people have issues with him I, I he's he's certainly very problematic H- he, how is he problematic please uh, do explain have you listened to the guy yes like he's he's very like he he's a he's little he's not edgy. what you would call a normal person who is a normal person no i mean but that's the thing though he, like maybe it's because he's so strange that he's able to be as creative as he is not that creative with the demands weird weirdness or anything like that i'm just uh, i don't know it's just he's you know he's problematic because of like the things he said in the past and some of his for example he's a little a little too comfortable with the n word and uh, <laughs> that whole feet thing is a bit weird yeah well that like the n word for example those are characters yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, screen but, uh, serving a purpose in the I story suppose, i suppose hey i'm a fan <laughs> I I love his work but I I just kind of want to see it from the point of view of people who say that he's you know not the greatest but I think everyone can agree that he's kind of a genius still kind of stick into his guns and he's he refuses to be told what to do by mm. the hollywood establishment and and the mainstream media yeah and and studio interference and all like he say i from what i know from what i've read he still gets to do what he wants because he's because he who because who he is mm. and i i think that's a good thing and I, i i hope he continues to make films and doesn't stop at 10 but then he's also a huge fan of cinema himself like yeah, that he's, comes he's a, out he's a movie i mean yeah in, in this, this movie yes. like this this was this movie was more about the medium than about anything else like mm. just like the joke i don't know this this movie didn't really have a point in there no it was yes. i guess one point was to kind of like revisit that whole tragedy around Sharon Tate and kind of revise that in a way that was i suppose cathartic to him as someone who probably grew up yes. watching a lot of that stuff and yep. following hollywood culture in the 60s but other than that it was very much about the medium no it was uh, very and he took he got the best out of both leo and mm. uh, and brad pitt uh, and, and even margot robbie as even as limited as her character role was she was good at uh, and what else did i like about it it's uh, i was just like playing all fun it had a very that's what you go for the movies feeling to it right yeah. Th- this is why we go to the movies right yes. to like have a good time is escapism at the end of the day isn't it it could be deeper of course that would be nice but you know i think tarantino is one of those guys who would like who strikes that balance he walks that line between escapist drama and entertainment and art that is almost this is probably a bold statement art that is almost um, avant-garde in a, in a way like 
there is sometimes it feels like there's no real structure to it and there's no there's no real point to it that's like like this movie there had so many scenes like where Leonardo DiCaprio's character is now it's been firmly established that he's a struggling actor that mm. he's a has been and yeah. he's washed up and he just wants to move on to bigger things but he can't and he's really frustrated and that's well established in that scene where he has like a meltdown in the in the trailer then later we get like this 15 minute scene with that little girl kind of revisiting the same thing right yes. but it's still en- you can still watch it it's still enjoyable because it's just it's just so well written leo dicaprio acted the shit out of this role yes. and i'm not even a huge dicaprio fan personally but uh, i thought he was really good in this one i think Leo and Tarantino are a good mix. They mm. they should work they should do more work together. I think. Hell even Brad Pitt. Like Brad Pitt was great in Inglorious Bastards. It's just fun. Coming back to the Bruce Lee scene which yeah I admit okay, so was a little un- <laughs> that was really I yeah. mean that was uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. It yeah. was unnecessary. I thought he was Because Bruce Lee anyway is this godlike figure. Right. Right? He has a certain reputation like people like a lot of people love him. Yeah. like not just like him but love him yeah not just for the movies that he made but also like for his philosophical side mm. he has a certain image that right. very few people have right especially people who have like come out of that hollywood mm. scene right so in this movie to see bruce lee he getting was reduced to like a walking stereotype yeah. which is shameful i thought yeah he bruce lee was a lot more than that i don't know what in terms of plot and character development i don't know what it serves i know it like kind of established brad pitt's character as this hard ass who doesn't give a Th- shit that that I, i think that that was the whole point of it like to yeah. show that he's not one to be fucked with yeah like you said that was the point like bruce lee is like unbeatable guy right mm. and if you can take bruce lee out then you're like god tier levels of you know physicality is that what they were going for i don't know but i, I think even, that, even that could point. have been done without making bruce lee a caricature Tarantino being the lover of cinema that he is and I'm sure he loved Bruce Lee. He could have handled it better, I thought. And his defense of that scene was that it's I watched this interview where he was saying that Bruce Lee was anyway like th- that arrogance was mm. a part of Bruce Lee's character mm. which it could have been. That's like he tried to portray this on-screen Bruce Lee in that same light and but like you said i i thought it could have been done better it felt a little like it left a, for it. it left a bad taste in my mouth yeah other than that it was almost a perfect film for me i even like the fact that there were like so many loose threads that were not resolved by the end of the film for example uh, brad pitt's characters the f- yeah the whether like he killed whether, whether, his whether wife he killed his wife or not yeah. that's left unanswered mm. that's why i said like this is like tarantino is like it's it's very different from your standard storytelling format in that he it just it just feels so kind of disorganized which i kind of like Th- there's so much to absorb like yeah a lot to unpack yes yeah. lots and lots of references like for example that whole story when uh, brad pitt visits that hippie commune mm. that's also like a real thing that happened in that charles manson with his group of hippies was living in this place called uh, spawn ranch right which was owned by a guy called George Spawn hmm. uh, the blind guy the blind guy right. who the hippies kind of like George Spawn has said that he was he was willingly giving the property to them hmm. but it widely theorized that that the hippies kind of forced him to like to live in his property hmm. and took advantage of him hmm. i read somewhere that when after the manson murders when the police were doing investigations they found like bodies of stuntmen and actors in in the in that property hmm. that those people had killed wow. so like th- th- there's a lot oh, i didn't know that to this story that that's why i said after i first saw this i mm. came back i read i watched all the interviews that have on youtube <laughs> like uh, of of uh, of the cast uh. and i read as much as i could like there's a, the, the series of oh, events somebody liked this film a lot <laughs> <laughs> that the series of events that led up to the manson murders mm. like that was perfectly set up mm. like even the fact that uh, brad pitt meets meets tex the guy tex yeah. by he the was way, one of the actual killers right he was yeah. like he was one of the killer one of the people who killed sharon tate right even that face off they had met before you had to watch the scene to like get it, it those things were those little details were really fun i think we both agree in the fact that we this was a really good movie contrary yeah. to 
what a lot of our friends are saying how how was it was it well received i haven't checked a single review or anything was it uh, i haven't seen the reviews okay. i'm just basing this off on like i saw this movie movie with two friends okay uh, mutual friends aruna and yeah. jo and the second time was with uh, johan shout out to johan at big fundamental on twitter they didn't like it as much right uh, aruna and jo didn't johan did he saw it three times i think So what was the issue with it that it was boring? It was boring. That's yeah. actually a very common criticism of this film apparently. For the life of me I cannot understand why it no, was, not was anything but boring. I mean yeah, yeah it wasn't uh, it wasn't like it wasn't the no, Avengers but it was <laughs> if you go go in expecting like a traditional story arc yeah it wasn't there. Mm. Then if you have that expectation I think you might Yeah, but yeah. even if you were looking for like good old fashioned entertainment, that final scene was it had so much of it. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was just amazing. <laughs> like they foreshadowed the whole thing uh, when Brad the Pitt the flame throw and everything. And also when Brad Pitt was training his dog. Oh yeah. At the trailer. Yeah. Like but I, I had to say I did not expect <laughs> that dog to get as violent as it did. <laughs> my god. <laughs> what, was, what was that? What was what kind of breed is that? It's a pit bull, right? Oh, ah, okay. Are they supposed to be that violent? I don't know. Okay, Jesus Christ. A good dog actor. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the cast was great. The whole cast was great. Yeah. You you had to watch that with 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 the music with Yeah. Like with the with the, the lighting, the setting, the Rick Dalton's Italian wife sleeping in the oh, yeah. uh, back. Francesca, right? Francesca. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so fun. So, uh, yeah, I think we've made our point. This was a really good movie. We both yeah. liked it. You should go see it. If you haven't seen it, and if you don't care about spoilers, yes. I frankly don't care. I'm like way beyond spoilers anyway. I don't <coughs> care about that shit anymore. Yeah. I think spoilers is just another marketing tactic. This mm-hmm. whole no spoiler warning where like the directors like write letters to the fans. Oh, please don't spoil the next Avengers. Well, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. Talking about Avengers, uh, something got uh, the MCU fans riled up this week. Oh yeah. Uh, this week oh yeah I, i mean i saw some headlines and tweets yes it was uh, no less than martin uh, scorsese yeah. has Ma- said uh, so what did he say this is what he sa- said right he was talking about the, he was he was giving an interview to uh, the empire magazine right and he was talking about marvel movies okay the superhero movies he said uh, this is an ex- the uh, this is what he said about him i don't see them i tried but that's not cinema Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks. It isn't c- the cinema of humans, human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. <laughs> I mean, there are two ways of looking at that. Okay, yeah. he hasn't seen anyone, right? Anything, right? He hasn't. He he says that he he doesn't see them. Like he has tried, but he it doesn't okay. really get to him. First of all, you can't you can't shit on a movie you haven't seen. That said, he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, I say this as someone who has seen. You are a Marvel fanboy, by uh, not anymore. <laughs> I uh, Af- not after Endgame. No, I mean, I've just kind of like I think I've out finally outgrown that shit. Right. I'm not saying they're bad movies. I th- just think uh, they're very formulaic. I know. Actually, like it's not just it's not even a Marvel versus DC thing. It's just like I'm tired of the entire fucking genre. To be honest, it's just so. unimaginative and so so pyrophetic uh, yeah you i think it has finally set in you should watch the voice oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i watched i i watched a bit of it it was it was fine take take any marvel movie right like this like spider man far from home jesus christ yeah. what the fuck was that that was <laughs> now that was a boring ass film yeah it was i, I didn't i actually wanted to leave and like every movie does the same thing right yeah. so there is a hero the the superhero and the hero is in some kind of conflict scott lang is fresh out of prison and he can't find a job mm. steve rogers is living in the past black panther what's his real name i can't remember his father was murdered and he's going through a whole thing and there's a tchala the tchala is and they they well, that took me a while they th- see i am not a fan clearly yeah. and <laughs> all, all of them like while go- going through this conflict they also have like a ca- captain america for example they, they they have like a godlike image to live up to like appearances to keep Mm. and there's a love interest sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't and along comes a villain and it's not like it's not like some trouble in my hometown kind of thing right it's always the like the stakes are always yes, high it's a world ending yeah. thing like yeah. it's not a job for the friendly neighborhood spider man yeah 
it's uh, it's it's always like you have to get get together the it's whole always game. a sky beam yeah. <laughs> always a fucking army of aliens and it's the same thing yeah. in every movie so you to be fair it's not just a marvel thing it's like this is common to the entire or to all of them i, I guess. think yeah yeah, yeah. DC is not this is actually worse this is DC movies are worse but yeah. like, like they creatively they at least at least marvel to th- their credit they at least try to be you know a little how do i put it creative you know they are like until quite recently marvel movies were mostly entertaining and very they were like perfectly serviceable films and uh, with great cast and like decent writing no i don't and dispute the fact that they were entertaining the first avengers movie the joss whedon's one that was that was a really good super that was like probably the best superhero team up movie we'll ever get i think and the first iron man was great and uh, they have been consistently good good in a very safe and unoffensive kind of way they have great production value yeah. they have and kevin feige props to him he's been running a tight ship for 10 plus years and he, he's done a really good job of that and Kevin Feige being the producer yeah he's the he's, he's the executive producer he's the, he's, he's the head of Marvel Studios yes obviously it made a shit ton of money for Disney yes okay yeah they, they are formula like as you said but you s- can still like kind of you can watch, watch the theater you can them, like yes. you know shut off your brain for a second and like have a good time right yeah yeah i've seen all the MCU films yeah like all of them i haven't seen two i haven't seen uh, ant-man and the wasp i haven't seen guardians 2 I I've, I've seen all of it uh, I only about two of them in the theater okay others uh, by illegal means and I enjoyed them there are movies that you can watch once and like kind of suspend your disbelief and right. like just spend that two hours have a good time I wouldn't watch them again but I wouldn't go as far as to call them not cinema <laughs> yeah i mean okay like nobody is more qualified to talk about cinema yes. than martin scorsese but These movies make a bajillion dollars. Clearly they speak to a lot of people. So many ticket sales even in like remote corners of the planet. <laughs> and uh, I can I don't know that it I, I don't think it's very fair to dismiss it so easily as, yes, you know, mm. not being cinema. If it speaks to you, if it entertains you, if you find some kind of comfort in it, it's still art no it's that's the only test you need right the yeah, test for the audience yeah. so uh, i get his point this whole thing about like they all feel very manufactured mm. obviously very profit driven nothing inherently wrong with that but it feel all of these movies not actually mind you not just marvel movies not even just superhero movies just blockbusters in general over the past 5 or 6 years mm. have been have felt extremely movie by committee they have a movie by committee to feel it like a bunch of studio execs got to get sat down together and they like sit down and work out okay like we should insert this scene that scene and not this scene this tested well with this segment of the audience this will do well with these demographics and this is how we read a reach as wide a market as possible and i feel like that's how these movies are made these days mm. maybe not on every level but at to, to a certain degree they are influenced by marketing decisions and um, that's fine that's okay these are blockbusters they are not supposed to be anything more it's just that it after a while it just gets a little tired you know it's uh, i mean why do these films even need a director anymore like they are very studio heavy films marvel has been hiring very competent directors and for the most part to be fair they've been they've done some interest, interesting work like for example Taika Waititi he, yeah. he he did really well with Thor Ragnarok yeah, that right was a fun movie to watch yeah it felt like a Taika Waititi film yes right you could sense his individualism you could see his like yeah, yes, yeah it kind of shown through right there. you don't get that in the later movies yes. Spider-Man Far From Home that was just like an ad for something i mean a lot of these movies feel like ads that they're trailers right like just for the next by, just yeah. by their very nature of being all part episodic. of the build up yeah. yes he compared it to a theme park or something right yes and yeah that i i that obviously makes sense if you look at it in those terms but what's wrong with theme parks <laughs> You go to a theme park to yeah. have fun, right? Yeah, yeah go there to have a good time. If you have a good time, that's all that matters, right? But the real threat is not really Marvel or superhero movies. The real threat here is, I think, Disney. People, I don't think enough people are worried about people who, you know, who are in the business. I don't think they're making enough of a voice about Disney eating into every... Basically owning yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Even with Star Wars, what they're doing is they're basically killing off that older... kill the past yeah they're killing the past <laughs> <laughs> and 
and they're building like a new generation of characters right yeah but it feels very factory made it it, it does i don't yeah. like it the like the output feels very factory made if you think about it it is a prudent business decision for disney yeah it makes because they need a new fan base monopolization of entertainment though is something that's very very worrying yeah. i think i'm sure i'm sure like people in hollywood like creatives actually are worried but they, maybe they're not voicing their concerns just because they don't want to piss them off at this rate they're going to end up owning everything disney is <laughs> going to end up owning everything hopefully there is some competition like okay now disney has disney plus and then maybe netflix can kind of netflix is making some noise because yeah. they are making their own they're movies they're making bad movies but at least they're making good original movies that's yeah. that's, that's great yes they do have a lot of original stuff yeah. like they are not great movies but yeah. they're fun to watch yeah they are making a lot of tv shows mm. so i think the competition in hbo is and there yeah. hbo is there i think even though game <laughs> of thrones was such a disappointment <laughs> uh, hulu is making their own stuff amazon is making their own stuff those companies are like huge yeah corporations in their own right but right. then like there is competition but they are not disney they are not disney they don't have disney money i mean they are not paupers by any means but this thing is this giant this monolith like yeah, yeah. So uh you disagree with Scorsese? I agree and disagree. I think it's wrong to kind of like completely to write, to completely write it off as yeah. you know. But at the same time he has a point about this whole you know theme like the movies becoming like a theme park thing. It's uh, that makes sense to me. I'm there's still some interesting things that you can do with this genre. It's uh, some material out there like in in the comics for example like if you want to be a bit more chum. If you want to do something a bit more challenging there is material to you know draw inspiration from but I don't not many studios are willing to take those kind of risks what anymore. What can you think of, think of like what would you like to see from a Marvel or superhero movie? I'm hoping uh, Matt Reeves does something interesting with uh, Batman uh, with uh, what's his name Robert Pattinson. To start with that's like very inspired ca- casting that's uh, he he's a great actor and um, Matt Reeves he's proved himself with the the Apes trilogy. No actually did he make the first one? He made the last two, I right? I can't remember. He made the last two yeah. which they were really good yeah, movies. Yeah, I thought they were great. From comics, let's say. So okay, so a- as a person who has not read any comics, I have a question for you. Why do we keep going to the same characters? The same characters. Why yeah, do we question. need another Batman? Is not there yeah. another character in the DC universe that Oh yeah there's plenty. Yeah. There I just there guess they're not Marvel but you know again in defense of Marvel characters like Iron they Man did that they were like yeah. yes. like you know second tier characters. Mm. In the they were not the A listers of uh, the superhero world. Right. And they took a risk by taking someone like Iron Man and giving it to a guy like Robert Downey Jr yes. who was just who had just come out of rehab at the time mm. in 2007 or 8. Mm. and uh, they took a they took a risk and it paid off so i don't i don't know if disney are still willing to take those same kind of risks anymore and if they are it just feels very cynical because it just feels like a crash grab and it's like targeted towards certain demographics and yeah. if the if the final product is good then it's great i'm 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 all for like representation and things like that like you know that's that's awesome i don't know it just feels very c- like a cynical cash grab at this point which i'm not a huge fan of yeah I would actually like to see comics that are coming from different labels, right? Not not just Marvel and DC, mm. but there are other Vertigo uh, and things like that. Vertigo, uh, Dark Horse. Yeah. Like all those again, I have to say that I haven't read any of these, but I I I want I want to experience something there is there is I haven't read all of these. I've read only like a couple of issues. Saga is very interesting. Yes, I by uh, Brian K. Vaughan. Why the Last Man? Um, what else? I think he wrote uh, Superman Birthright. That was that was a in- very interesting take on Superman's origin story. Right. Most of the comics I own are actually Batman, Long Halloween, Dark Victory, Dark Knight Returns. Those are again like most of them are like Elseworlds stories, which are not part of the main canon. I'm not like a huge comic person. I don't I don't read like regularly. I haven't. I've only read like collected editions like that. There are interesting enough interesting stories to. No, but like you said like why do we want to see another batman movie or superman yeah. movie like you know but looks like disney has announced like a whole so they do have a lot of other like tv oh no, shows right but it's again right? loki coming back yes. and then winter soldier and uh, what's his name bucky i don't care if it's superhero or, or not or whatever fantasy uh, sci-fi just 
give us some original stories man i'm Kay. tired of this like sequel remake mm. soft reboot hard reboot bullshit okay so uh, okay, yeah. do we have anything else to say no i think we're good it's been a while since we last recorded and our first anniversary kind of quietly slipped by we didn't even notice we uh, yeah we started recording in uh, our first episode was sometime in september last year yeah thank you to everyone who's been listening from day one that's about 10 of you <laughs> uh, go tell uh, 10 other people if yeah, you can tell, tell 10 more and then please give us a review slash rating spread the word on social media and uh, and just keep listening yeah yes okay. thank, right you. thank you thank you